Would you like to design your FTTH network faster and more accurate? Should your design be more optimized, hence less expensive when it enters construction phase? Would you like to explore more different design options before you choose the right one? Yes? Take a short journey with me and I will show you how to do all those things using InnovaTelecat GIS software. All it takes is 5 steps. And by the way, those steps are all automated. You'll have your network ready before you know it. Before you start with the design process, you will need some input data. The first thing to do is to get routes and subscribers data into your drawing. Acquisition of this kind of data is always preceded with some kind of field work. Whatever survey method is used, like GPS measurement, total station theodolite survey or even aerial imagery, Telecat GIS is able to import provided data and to convert them into its own format which is DWG based. Once the data is in place, you can start designing your network. As I mentioned before, the design process goes through five steps which are highly automated. Nevertheless, in each step you are given an opportunity to influence the final outcome by making changes along the way. This way, you'll have the full control over the design while letting the program do all the heavy work for you. The whole process revolves around hierarchy of network elements, topology in other words. Once the topology is sorted out, everything else easily falls into place. Telecat GIS can help you organize a subscriber network interface devices or NIDs into clusters. At the same time, it shall also propose optimal locations for fiber concentration points or FCPs from which those NIDs are to be fed. First thing to do is to tell the program what is the minimum and maximum number of NIDs per cluster that you want. These numbers are usually based on the capacity of FCPs that are to be used in the design. In our case, we shall use FCPs that contain splitters with splitting ratio of 1 to 32, so the maximum number of subscriber NIDs is going to be 32. And that's it. Clusters are generated and optimal locations for FCPs are proposed. You can accept proposed arrangement and generate cluster regions together with FCPs. Generated regions can still be manually edited, while FCPs can be manually relocated if needed. Automatically generated FCPs don't have their internal structure. In other words, they don't have patch panel connectors or splitters. There are many ways to define internal structure of many different elements in Telecat GIS, including manual approach. However, the fastest way to do so is to create a template and to apply it to as many objects in the drawing as you want. Simply create internal structure of one FCP, save it as a template and then apply it to all other FCPs. This dramatically saves the time. In order to connect elements of the network, the program needs to know hierarchical position of every element in that network. Some hierarchical relations have already been defined, but not all. For example, through the process of clustering, relations between NIDs and FCPs have already been established, but we still didn't say what feeds the entire network, or if we want to treat all clusters as part of one cable serving area, or we want to divide them into two or more cable serving areas. This requires few more manual steps. First, you will create a cable serving area and define its source of supply. In this case, ODF in central office is the source of supply. Next, 
relocate cluster areas so that they become sub-elements of cable serving area. Source of supply for each cluster is already known because it was defined through the previous process of clustering in step 2. That does it. Hierarchical structure or the network topology as we otherwise call it is defined. We can now proceed to the next step. Cables can be automatically laid across the entire network or just segments of it. We indicate this by checking the boxes in front of the network branches. Once we start with automatic cable laying process, the program will lead us through its steps. First, it will detect splices and ask us if we want to use or ignore them. I placed these strategically so I can use them in this network. So yes, we shall keep them. Here we can see proposed network hierarchy which corresponds to cables and network nodal elements displayed on the site plan drawing. If needed, this position of cables or the hierarchical structure of the network can be adjusted. Keep in mind that this is just a proposal, none of the actual cables are generated so far. Another thing we need to do is to define capacities of cables. This is always complemented with definition of cable's internal construction, in other words, cable type. Each cable capacity is determined based on the total demand of sub-elements it feeds. Cables are taken from the cable catalog, however, only cables that are on the favorites list are considered. This way, you control which cables are to be used in the final network design. Now we can choose whether we want to splice all the fibers or we just want to generate cables. We could leave splicing for later, but this time we shall splice them right away. Everything is already prepared and we could just accept the proposed fiber plan. However, here too we can make some additional adjustments. We could rearrange order of splicing by sorting network elements or we could demand additional spare fibers on any network element. No matter what we do, the program shall analyze the impact of our actions and display warnings so we can make corrections in order to make valid network connections. After this, we can generate our FTTH network. The network has been generated. We can now use some of many Telecat GIS tools to get more insight in our network. Telecat GIS is very versatile software when it comes to dealing with communications infrastructure. It has many tools that shed light on your network from different angles. At the same time, all infrastructure data is in one place. We call it single source of data. This ensures that any subsequent change made to the infrastructure automatically affects different elements of your project, such as print layouts or reports. Use Delicate GIS to skip tedious part of your job and unleash your creativity.